All right, I'm going to tell you about Lump Park and a man named Kitty. All right, this one of the strangest ones ever. All right, a man named Kitty. Remember that. All right. Unique Mech Audio, man. You know, I I'm here with a man named Kitty. Now, let me break this down. I'm in Lump Park. I'm in Lump Park, California, like back 2001. I just get there, all right? Let me just run it back a little bit so you understand how my travels went, all right? I got locked up December 93 um, in New York. Then they took me down to Virginia. I'm going to talk fast now so we can run past a little for them and everything. They take me down to Virginia December 93. I got locked up uh, on December 10th, you know, by the uh, 28th, 29th, right before the New Year. They take me down to Virginia. You know, they arraign me. They take me to trial. They do all this. And by uh, September 15th, I'm being sentenced. June 17th, I was convicted. The, uh, October 17th, 94, I'm in Lewisburg. I go to Lewisburg. I get in it. I wind up, you know, wetting up two police and you know, wind up in ADX, you know, from like 95 to like May 1999 or something like that. I stayed there, you know, for about two years, you know, um, when I come out of ADX, um, I wind up in Allenwood, you know, so from May, you know, 1999 until like August of 2001, they decided to ship me out to Lump Park because they said I was getting too much drugs in the prison. So they wanted to get me away from the East Coast because I had access to, to drugs and, you know, uh, uh, homies that was there with their girls to bring the drugs in. I even had some dudes' mothers bringing the drugs in, you know, but they had their mothers bringing the drugs in. Not bragging about none of that. Just telling you what it is. Want to give you real prison life so you understand. You know what I mean? You know, mom's young, mom's down, mom's know what time it is. So, you know, you tell your moms, you know what I mean? Go, you know, my man's girl going to bring you over, you know, uh, uh, ounce of, you know, heron, you know, you got to put in the balloons and bring it up and, you know, I'm going to make sure that, you know, we continue to make the household eat like I did when I was on the street. So that's how we do it in prison, just so you understand. So you youngins don't think ain't nothing nice about this, you know what I mean? So I ain't bragging about it, ain't pushing. I mean, y'all say, oh yeah, his mother doing it, you know what I mean? But it is what it is, man. I mean, we were surviving back then and we ain't had no other means not to mollify to make no excuses, but anyway, past that. Now, they couldn't catch me in Allenwood, and I was bringing dope in a mile a minute at everybody bringing it in for me. So they busy watching me on the visit, thinking I'm the one bringing it in because I'm the one orchestrating and, you know, running things on the compound. But it wasn't me bringing it in. You know, I brought it in a couple of times. But, you know, the homies was bringing it in. You know what I mean? You know, so they watching me, and I got my older peoples over here doing what they do. So they winds up sending me out to Lump Park because they couldn't catch me. Big shout out to Feeney. If any of y'all, and calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. If any of y'all been in the federal system and you ran across Feeney, S-I-S Feeney, you know what I'm talking about. He was like a pit bull, like a bloodhound. He was out the Bronx. Little Irish, you know, white boy used to always wear a, a little ass Jets jacket because he was a Jets fan. But Feeney sends me out to Lump Park. If you want to know about Feeney, I'll give you more about Feeney. That's the best that ever did it. Him and his man Sturgill. Big shout out to Sturgill. All right, let's give Sturgill a big shout out. These, calm down, y'all, calm down. These are the SIS men that was set to, you know, to bring me down. You know what I mean? But, you know, I moved too good, the mind too strong, so they couldn't catch me. So they just said, screw that. And they told me they were sending me to Terminal Island, California, real nice joint on the beach, you know, where the jet skis and the boats drive by and the white girls pick their shirts up, let you see their breasts. And they had me all souped up. I'm going to this heaven out in California. But now I get out there to Oklahoma and they're telling me I'm going to Lump Park Penitentiary. You know, one of the uh, roughest federal prisons. At the time, it was the roughest federal prison on the West Coast. You know what I mean? Because it's before Victorville opened up, Atwater opened up, when only penitentiary they had out there then was uh, Lump Park. But now I get out to Lump Park. When I get out to Lump Park, you know what I mean? Being that I was in ADX, I was there with the big homies that had it all, you know what I mean, uh, from all over the country. So when I get to Lump Park, I'm there with one of the black hand, you know what I mean, in, um, in ADX. So when I get to Lump Park, 
one of his homies, you know, Sereno rolled up on me. And, you know, Sereno's ain't supposed to deal with black, so he rolled up on me and, you know, I'm walking with the homies and he come walking up and he put his hands out, shook me five and hit me off with about three balloons, you know, two grams each, you know, either three or five, something like that, you know what I mean? I think it was five because I wound up giving the homies two for them to break it down, make sure the rest of the car eat, you know, you got to do that just in case something happened, the car happy, the car, you know what I mean? Like I said, you know, like my mama told me, I told you in the other video, you know, when my brother went around the corner and picked up beef with the uh, uh, Puerto Ricans and he came back in the house, you know, mama said, uh, go on out there and fight for your brother. You know what I mean? He got an issue, you know? So then a couple of days later, a week later, my brother go out and, uh, you know, he finds some money and he come in yelling, you know, I found some money and I'm going to buy and I'm, 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 it ain't no more wheat, you know, but when he had the beef, it was wheat. So mama said, hold up, boy. When you had beef and you went around the corner and you found problems, you came back home and that was you and your brother's beef. Now you go find some money and you trying to save yours. Boy, you better break that money down with your brother. So I used that same terminology in prison. So being that they hit me off with little five joints, I gave the homies two. They busted down, made sure, you know, everybody got a little something out of it so they could put some food in their locker and, you know, get their knives and everything. So we sharpened up in case anything go down. So now, big shout out to Wise from Jersey. Big shout out to Wise from Jersey. Because, you know, Wise from Jersey was out there. You know, big shout out. Wise from Jersey was out there holding me down. Let me clarify something. In the story that I gave about the Jersey story, I mixed up Wise at the end with my man Sparky B. Yo, Sparky B, get at me. Sparky B, that's the official blood homie. Official blood homie. You know what I mean? That came out west, showed them his paperwork. You know, let them know he wasn't hot. You know what I mean? And he just trying to get transferred back east. So he showed his paperwork, you know, let them know he wasn't hot. And then he, you know, went up top and waited for a transfer. But they dogged him out, made him do 18 months. Then they sent him out to Coleman, official brother. Big shout out again to Sparky B. All right, let's get that right. Let's get that right. All right, all right, all right, all right. So now Sparky B, you know, that's the one that was in Lump Park with me that gave me like about 20 books to stand flat books. He got out of his property and said, yo, just make sure you let everybody know that I'm breaking out because I'm trying to get back east. And I'm not going to have these West Coast bloods trying to think they can tell me what to do. And I'm definitely not putting down my flag was his exact words. So he went right to the blood card, to the shot callers, and he produced his paperwork and said, here, you know what I mean? This is my paperwork. We do it so you can see I ain't hot. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm choosing to leave because I got to get back east. I just got married, you know, boo, boo, boo. So that was Sparky B. That wasn't wise, you know what I mean? But that was wise that they stole his identity. Dude was running around getting drugs, using wise name, wise money receipts, wise pictures after he went to hold. That was wise Sully <clears throat> that stole his identity. <clears throat> now, you know, you got to be a fly brother for a dude all the way out west. I think it's from San Diego, you know what I mean? That's where he's from, San Diego. I thought it was San Francisco, you know. I talked to my man Wise. Big shout out to Wise for hitting me up. Big shout out. So, you know, we got all that right. You know, we got all that right. So now, you know, so we now we don't clarify that. Like I say when I make a mistake, I'm a man. I clarify. We did with 26 years, all this foolery mixed up. So let me get back to this Lump Park thing. So I'm in Lump Park. I got all this dope coming in. The black hand hit me off with some dope. I hit the homies off, say on standby, boo boo woo, and everybody eating. I'm eating. But then I get into something in the unicorn, one of these fake ass police that, you know what I mean, was used to talking to people like crap because, you know, people wanted a unicorn job because a unicorn job pay a dollar an hour when the compound job pay five dollars a month. You know what I mean? So if you work eight, ten hours for the day, you make ten dollars a day. You know what I mean? You work twenty days at ten dollars, ten dollars a day, you know, without the weekends. You talking about two hundred dollars, you know what I mean, government money. So when dudes ain't got nobody sending them nothing, that's a lot of money. You know what I mean? But you know, I was just out there because I'm trying to, you know, work my way back to the East Coast, and that's where all the money is at in the Unicorn, because everybody out there getting a dollar a day. So I'm getting two dollars a day if they're premium. So I want to have my dope out there accessible to the dudes getting that free government check. That's like the first and fifteenth, what we call on the street Mother's Day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all know Mother's Day. You know what I mean? First and the 15th. Well, you know, uh, paycheck at the beginning of the month, that's our, our Father's Day in the penitentiary. But we up in the joint. Police ran up on me because I took a little too long smoking my black and mild in uh, the smoke room. So, you know, I, I checked him and, you know, he got spooked, put me in the shoe. Now I go in the shoe and the shoe set up just like behind me. Now this is where the man named Kitty come in. So now I'm up in the joint and a typical night in the shoe was real crazy out there in Lump Park. 
You know what I mean? They had this in old back, old part of the jail that been built since like <clears throat> early 1900s, like 1910, 1920. But they opened it up to call it the shoe, the special housing unit. So now I'm back there in the shoe and uh, a white boy come up there and I asked him, you know, what happened? You know what I mean? And he called himself Princess Leah. That was his name, Princess Leah. Picture that, a man telling me his name, Princess Leah. I said, nah, nigga, what's your name, boy? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I called him a boy. But I ain't spit like old Rambo. Remember Rambo with Big B? I said, what's your name, boy? I mean, come on, I'm not calling you no Princess Leah. So he said his name was Lonnie or something. You know what I mean? I said, all right, well, Lonnie, why are you up here? He said, man, I just got off the bus. Uh, you know, uh, uh, um, I'm downstairs and I meet this dude, you know, black dude. I liked him, big old black dude, you know, huge, da da da. And I said, well, I don't want to hear the nigga description, but I just asked you why you up here. He said, well, I'm messing with him and everything was cool. The white dudes ain't had no problem with it. Then these new young white boys came up, you know, white guys came up. Cause he ain't say boys, you know. He said these young um, white guys came up and they started pushing the line saying that they didn't want me having homosexual acts with, you know. Uh, oh, let me say that. Uh, he cipher, monkey cipher, X, you know what I mean? With blacks, you know what I mean? So I'm like, didn't want you to have me have a monkey have uh, uh, sex with blacks. I said, what, what, what you doing having sex with a black? <laughs> you know what I mean? He said, nah, you know, that, that's what I'm into. I said, all right, so how you get up here? He said, man, they basically told me I had to check in. You know what I mean? So I don't check in. You know what I mean? So now the next day, this big old black dude come up there yelling, yo, Princess Leah, Princess Leah. You know what I mean? And that's all you hear, this big, deep ass voice, Princess Leah, Princess Leah. You know, and I'm the orderly, so I'm on the tip. So I go downstairs to see, you know, what he talking about, what he wanted. So he said, yo, you know uh, Princess Leah? I said, I don't know no Princess Leah. He said, you know white dude? I knew who he was talking about, but I'm not even going to coincide with agreeing with him that a man's name is Princess Leah. So he described him to me. He said, tall white guy, got a ponytail, you know, looked like the, the girl Princess Leah from the movie. I said, nah, I don't know no nigga that looked like no Princess Leah from no movie. And you know what I mean? He said, was a tall, skinny white dude? I said, you mean Lonnie? You know, he said, well, I don't know. I just know Princess Lee. I said, well, I don't know Princess Lee. I know Lonnie, nigga. You know what I mean? He said, oh, well, give him these cigarettes for me. So he came up, bought a little, maybe two loose cigarettes. You know, uh, I take it back there and give it to the boy. So he get the joint and all that. And now he trying to pass kites, you know, using me to bring the kites to him, to Lonnie, you know? So I bring a kite up there to Lonnie and... Then Lonnie ride a kite back, and I said, look, I'm not going to be no middleman between this he cypher, monkey cypher crap. You know what I mean? I did the first one because, you know what I mean? I ain't know what it was, but now I find out he's trying to get you to come back to the compound. I'm not trying to get into all that because now the, you know, the little unit talking, you know, back there in the shoot. So he winds up checking in to try and, get, you know, uh, he did something to come back there so that he could get in the cell with Lonnie. You know, but they wouldn't put him in a cell because it was a black and white thing. You know what I mean? They wasn't mixing them like that in the hole because they figured if a black dude in the cell with a white dude, that meant that the black dude, you know, you know, uh, 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 taking advantage of him with the heat cipher, monkey cipher crap. You know what I mean? So they wouldn't put him in a cell. But he came back there and he talking to him and he throwing the kite. They called the wheeler in Spanish. He throwing dental floss down the tear, you know, with a little toothpaste squeezed out flat so it fit under the bars down to them and they passing their own kites and they doing their own thing. So that's them. Let's get that now. We're going to park them. So then now, this big dude from Texas come in. My man, good dude from Texas. Now he comes in and me and him chilling, we kicking it. You know, love him. Big shout out to Texas. Big shout out to Texas. So now, he comes in. Calm down, calm down. Now he comes in and he telling me about, you know what I mean? Uh, what's going on on the pound, what I miss, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then this other little white dude came in, you know, from California, you know, little chubby kid, you know. He come in and, you know, being I'm an oldie, I got to go to his cell and see what he needs. So I go to his cell and I say, well, you need uh, cleaning supplies, anything to clean the toilet, the sink or whatever. And he goes, yeah, can you bring me, you know, a, 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 a roll of toilet paper and bring me any, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. That ain't the way you talk, my man. I don't know what you do with everybody else, but when I come to this door, I'm coming to the door because we all men up here. He's like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And I'm like, yo, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop that. Let me hear some bass in your voice. You know what I mean? He's like, I can't do it. <clears throat> this is the way I talk. 
So my man called me. He said, yo, leave him alone, you. You know what I mean? Because they're going to fire you from the job. Because I'm pushing the line there. Ain't none of these East Cyber Monkey Cyber going to pull me into this talking like no female and doing none of that. I'm not having none of that. So man, tell me, yo, fall back, you. You know? So I fall back. I get him the toilet paper. You know, and the little Ajax and all that, they clean up his cell. And they put in a little envelope and a little Ajax and, you know, give it to him with a little piece of a green pad so they could scrub that filthy toilet out. So now he up there in the joint and he gets this Spanish dude in the cell. So now we in there talking one night and, you know, we talk through the bars just like you see behind us. So we talk through the bars and my man from Texas, that's why I mentioned him, he used to sing. You know what I mean? He used to, you know, he used to sing like Frankie Beverly and The Temptations and the whispers and the Delphonics. He sing all the old songs through the joint. So it's at night, you know, we ain't got no radio back there. So he's singing and, you know, we writing our letters to our loved ones while he's singing all these different ballads and everybody's screaming out the door, sing this one, <clears throat> sing that one. <clears throat> and he knocking it out. Now, one night, um, in between him singing, we hear somebody start talking. Now, it's a female voice. He's like, um... Um, he's like, hey, kitty. You know, he's like, um, I gave him do the female voice. He's like, hey, kitty, you know, um, what you doing? You up there with dude? What are you in love? You know, so kitty yelling, I don't know what you talking about. You know what I mean? He's like, boy, you know, I remember you from the compound. You were da 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 You know what I mean? So kitty like, I don't know what you're talking about. So the next day I'm up there, I bring kitty something. So... I said, why are you back here anyway? You know, he, he don't even look violent. Little chubby kid about 24 years old, white dude, little blonde hair and blue eyes. So I said, why are you back here anyway? So he goes, now, you know, he goes his little squeaky ass voice. He goes, oh, um, I, I, I was walking down the hall and this big black guy, you know, when I go in the uh, 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 law library, he tells me at four o'clock count, make sure, you know, I'm in the bathroom and I'm naked, you know what I mean, in the library. I said, what? He said, yeah, big black guy, huge. He tells me, make sure I'm in the bathroom at 4 o'clock count and I'm butt naked, you know, in the law library. I said, so what happened? He said, I'm here. <laughs> I was like, what? He said, I'm here. So in other words, you know, he got scared because the black boy told him to be in the bathroom butt naked at 4 o'clock because I guess he was going to have he cypher, monkey cypher, you know, crap with him. You know what I mean? So he up there and he telling me about it. Come to find out it's the same dude that had Princess Leah. You know what I mean? I ain't going to say no names or where he from or none of that. But, you know, if y'all was there, y'all know what I'm talking about. So now he up there. I ain't even really paying no attention to it. So now they have a big old fight in the yard. And they bring up dudes from all over the, you know what I mean? It was like a, a racial joint. So it had a bunch of blacks was going at the white. So, you know, like I said, when things happen, all the cars come together. So you got a mixture of everybody up there in the hole. So they bring this one dude up there in the hole. And he... he he he, he, he he next to me and you know the way it is with the balls you see those balls that's a room right next to it so you could take a mirror you know what i mean you get these little plastic mirrors you get from commissary and you could hold it out let me put it how i could put it all uh, right yeah you, you you can put it out the balls you can put it out the balls like this and tilt it you know what i mean and you can see in the cell next to you so my man used to stick his mirror out over there and, you know, Kitty was, you know, in the cell next to me. And I'm in the middle, and it's a dude over here on the right. And he like, yo, pass this to Kitty. And I'm like, nah, I'm not passing nothing to no he cypher, monkey cypher. Man, you got a line, you pass it. You know what I mean? I don't do all that with them he cypher, monkey cypher. I stay out there lane before somebody think I'm sending them a kite. That's why I ain't got my name on none of that he cypher, monkey cypher crap, because I made so I stayed conscious of that. But anyway, uh, Kitty in the room with this uh, Spanish, you know, Spanish brother. You know what I mean? From out west. So every night, you know, you hear meow, meow. You know what I mean? But we had some old junkyard, you know, tomcats out in the back of the prison that they used to, you know, they used to meow and cry like a baby. I mean, if y'all know cats, I hate cats. Y'all already told me I'm scared of cats and I hate cats. I'm glad it was outside of the prison. But these cats used to be out there crying like a baby. Eh, eh, eh. You know, all night. You know what I mean? I guess they out there with whatever. So then now I'm hearing meow. <clears throat> and I know cats don't go no meow like that. You know, not these big old Tom cats they got there. I ain't paid no attention. I'm sleeping. I'm rolling over. Now, dude next door to me, I can hear him pacing on the cell. And he's knocking on the wall for me. 
You know what I mean? I'm acting like I'm asleep. I don't want to get involved in none of this crap he's into. So he's boom, 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 on the wall, and I'm acting like I'm asleep. I'm here, meow, meow, meow. And I'm like, what the hell? And he's boom, 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 boom. And he's going crazy over there. You know what I mean? So he ain't paying it no mind. You know what I mean? No, I'm trying to get my rest on. I just wrote my letter to my uh, my wife. I'm good, you know? So, I mean, meow, meow. You know what I mean? Dude, like, yo, 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 tap on the wall, tap on the wall. I'm like, man, I'm not tapping on nothing. This is what I'm saying to myself. I'm not even answering them. You know what I mean? So I yelled over, man, go to sleep, nigga. I'm not getting up, you know? And like, now nah, you, no, nah, yo, I'll give you a pack of soup. Just tap on the wall. Think I want a butt naked soup to get involved in this crap to go knocking on a wall, play middleman because my cell in the mirror. So the next day we get up, we go outside the wreck. So now when we go outside the wreck, I'm wondering what the hell is going on, you know? So I asked him, I said, yo, what was all that noise last night? So dudes just started laughing. Nobody ain't telling me nothing. So we worked out, got our workout in, everybody just laughing, you know what I mean? So, you know, we go back in and later on that night I hear again, meow, meow, meow. And I'm like, yo, let's, boy, go to sleep, you know what I mean? You know, but it sounds like a real cat. You know what I mean? So I don't know if it's a real cat or somebody just making noise. You understand what I'm saying? And out of nowhere, the next day we go back to wreck. And I said, yo, I don't know who. I'm talking to everybody on in, in the wreck cage. Like, man, I don't know who making all that noise keeping me up, man. You know what I mean? But y'all got to keep that joint down, man. Y'all louder than the cats outside. You know, so everybody laughing. You know what I mean? But they know I'm not in that he cypher, monkey cypher crap. So they ain't, you know, they just laughing. They don't want to tell me. You know what I mean? So my man that's always knock on the wall, I asked him, I said, dog, why you keep knocking on my wall every time you, we hear this cat or whoever making the noise? You know what I mean? And he's like, man, that, that's Kitty. I said, Kitty who? You know what I mean? You know, I'm, I'm thinking, talking about a cat. He said, no, that's Kitty next door to you. I said, what? That's a dude. And he's like, yeah, him and the Spanish dude in there, they have a he cipher, monkey cipher. I'm like, what? I said, get out of here. He said, yeah, that's why I'll be trying to tell you the knot because I've been trying to get in the cell with Kitty. I said, whoa, my nigga, whoa. You know what I mean? Gunshots. Find him for that, you know? But he's telling me he's trying to get in the cell with Kitty, you know? And he's telling me every time Kitty yelling me out, that's because dude, you know, going up in him doing whatever they doing in there. And I'm like, nah, man, nah. Yo, 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 y'all calm down, calm down, man, calm down. Let me finish this. Cause I gotta tap out with this. This just went crazy. So Kitty up in a joint, and he making all this meow noise. It seems like every time he have and he cipher monkey cipher X. You understand what I'm saying? That he yells me out. You know, and the whole team know about it, but nobody won't tell me about it because I'm he cipher monkey cipher phobic. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm like, nah, man. I don't know, yo. I'm so phobic about this. I didn't even want to be in the cell next to a dude, even though he's in the other cell, knowing that he was that close to me and this was going on. And like I said, I ran down the history of, you know, when I came in from 94 to Lewisburg to ADX to Allen was selling dope. So I ran that down so you understand. I was never around none of this. I never knew anything about these he cypher monkey cypher activities going on in the prison. You know what I mean? Until now. This is how I really got introduced to it. When I was in Allenwood, like I said, you know, you had the heat cypher, monkey ciphers, you know, the big white dude and the little dude that got married. But, you know what I mean? Like I said, I went and got my knife and checked that. Let him know. Don't even, I don't even want to see none of that outside my door. You know what I mean? So I've never really around this to experience nothing like this. But it's the first time I was this close to it. You know what I mean? And this man is yelling me out all night. I'm like, dude, don't you get tired? Come on, man. Gunshots. Fit out. Yeah. You know, but dude trying to get in the cell with Kitty. So the lieutenant come around. We had a lieutenant. I ain't gonna say his name. If y'all was out there in Love Park, you know what I'm talking about. He used to be a big white dude. Good, good white dude. Lieutenant was excellent. He used to let us go to the commissary and order tobacco. I was the orderly, so he let me go to, to the commissary every week, order a $10 can of tobacco like this. That $10 can later became selling for like $3,500 in the prison wholesale. You know what I mean? If somebody want to buy the whole joint, you might give it to them for 3000 
You know what I mean? For a $10 can. But he used to let me go buy it from the commissary so I could break off all the dudes when they start wilding and flooding. If you want to know about flooding and how they wild out in the shoe and why he was giving me this tobacco, you understand. So when a dude wild out start flooding, I just take him a little ball of tobacco and I say, yo, man, here, take this, man. Clean the water up and stop that shit, man. Unplug your toilet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because if not, you know, the police got to do a whole bunch of work. They call the lieutenant. So, you know, police, he had the, the Elvis Presley sideburns, the big pork chops coming out of his face, big tall white boy, about 6'6", six, six, you know, but he was a good dude. I can't say nothing bad about him. You know what I mean? Not even that he was an Elvis Presley fan because he loved Elvis. He'll hate for me to say anything about Elvis. But he looked out crazy for all of us all these in there, and he looked out for the inmates, whatever we want. So I got the tobacco in there, so I give my man next door me the tobacco, at night, I said, look, dog, when you hear Kitty, man, you just smoke this tobacco and take your mind off this he cypher, monkey cypher crap you got going on. Drop to your knees and pray to the Lord to get the demons up out of your ass, man. What is wrong with you? You know what I mean? I, I mean, I really try to talk some sense into him. He let like, mind you. You Jamaican, so you don't understand. I said, nah, I know American friends that ain't into that. So don't tell me about it like it's no Jamaican thing and we phobic. You know what I mean? You a man, my dog. Regardless where they got you, you're going to get back out there. The thing is, he was going home in like eight months. And he going crazy for a man named Kitty meowing at night from having his cypher monkey cypher. And he tried to tell me, I don't understand what's going on. My nigga, I don't want to understand what's going on. You know what I mean? Just smoke this tobacco and lay down. You know, and that's what it is. We ain't got to do all that, you know. So we doing our thing, man. And, you know, let me get ready to tap out because it's doing blinking, man. Because if you want to hear the rest of this, let me know, man. But I've been on here long enough. You know what I mean? This is just crazy, man. I mean, all this he cypher, monkey cypher crap going on around me. I couldn't take it no more. But I'm going to just tap out on that, man. Let me bring this uh, uh, outro in so y'all can see what it is. All right. Hi guys, welcome to Platinum Cuisines. We're located in Freeport on the North Kamal. Just wanted to introduce my partner, Amy. Hi guys, how are you? And this is my sister-in-law, Diana, another partner. Um, I just ask that you come support our minority-owned business. We serve Asian fusion Caribbean cuisine, and we have a beautiful restaurant located on the Nautical Mile in Freeport, New York. And we're asking that you come check us out and also make sure to tune in to Mecca Audio TV. Cheers, cheers, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime. Out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix. Yeah. What he mentions a gift. Trust. You stand up, ten toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this. Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in hall. Uh. He cut from the bottom, back. came up from the bottom. Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it. An Instagram it. page and a YouTube, you could go and visit. Yeah. Then you could consider yourself linked in. Sit front row and get Jews from a kingpin. Uh. How he went through it, so you ain't gotta go do it. Uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid. Talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on probably the reason that him and your grams got along a man that generated millions on the block did his time never squilling to the cops make an audio Get it live like two G's in the 90s. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. 
I let shorty go, she was whining. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper den. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, this a roaring uptown. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust downs. Now we on the positive. You we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being an operative. So take heed, homie Linda Ed. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs.